Boogie man, mate. Woo. Uh, 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 Halloween tings. Uh, uh, Fucking boom. What it does, what it's popping, everybody. My name is Uncle Spooky C Feezy. Oh, I like that. What up, everybody? It is uh, Naughty Nose Dog. How you going? There you go. Welcome to episode 104. Bad Habits of Podcast. We're back in the motherfucking building. You know the best. We had uh, we had another few weeks off. People may have noticed. No, don't lick that. Hopefully, and, people missed us. Yeah, I hope so. And uh, for no. you know, if you're watching the video, you can tell that Notion has a scary mask on, and I have a ski mask on. So yeah, we are it's Halloween. Scare the kids. Ready to scare the kids uh, on Halloween. I also have Barrington in, on my lap. In the building. What up, Vito? Look at him. Just watching you. Just look an absolute gorgeous looking teddy bear. All right. Just pouring, pouring up the weed drink. I love um, it. So what are you sipping on there, mate? This is called Strawberry Wackery. Get oh, it? sweet. Like a daiquiri. Yes, I like that. Like a daiquiri. I guess you whacked. It's a... Uh, clone. Clone? Clone. Clone, yeah. Probably clone. It have, it's, uh, does it have two dots on the O? A, a line. Oh, accent, fam. Probably clone then. And it's uh, six love milligrams it. THC, six CBD... I'll talk about it in a sec because I did a big order from the um, OCS, the Ontario one. I used to get everything from the Quebec one. And uh, this is so much more fun. Fuck my life. It's so much better. Sick. Fuck. So. I've actually been getting into those as well. So we, we, when you come back to it, I'll add in my two cents because I've been enjoying the uh, the drinks lately too. I'd love to hear um, about all of that. So let's get the thumbnail real quick just so we can get this, take our masks off because it's hot as shit. Barrington. Barrington. Look at the camera. Look. Look, bear. Bear. Look. Bear, look, look, yeah, look, bear, look. That's good. <laughs> he's licking the he's weed like can. He loves it. Mate, of course he's licking the weed can. If Clone wants to reach out and uh, sponsor us, you know. Sponsor Barrington, yeah. Sponsor Barrington we'll just, uh, we'll with the vibes. Uh, do you want to take this off now because it's sort of annoying? Do you know what? Sure. Because I can't drink me bloody drink, mate. Yeah, which is, which is kind of fair. Right, and totally. It's like cold, it's but it's not like that fucking cold. Where... Now, this is the scary part. Right. Now we lose. Now, now it's really get, scary. Now everyone's now scary. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there. Hey, buddy. Nice. So, cheers, mate. Uh, cheers, bloke. You're on the old uh, Perrier, right? I got aloe water and Perrier, little mixy. That's a great mix. A little sober Sally mix. So we're gonna get into that. I think we're gonna start with that. So, basically, let let, let me just set the scene. You know, we took. Much longer off over the summer um, due to multiple factors, mostly my moving. And it's just like, I don't know, people don't really give as much of a fuck about podcasts during the summer. And they're trying to hang out. Elephanting out in the sunshine and having exactly. a lovely time. Yeah. So we came back for two weeks and we were back in action. And um, then one weekend we had, it was the weekend of Thanksgiving, which I believe, I can't remember if we did a podcast then or not. We might have even skipped it because... One, yeah. We skipped it because we had all Tiff's family and Dan's family in town from the UK. And then um, that was just a very hectic weekend and week. So we just couldn't really make it work. Dan was in town, but we couldn't sort of figure it all out. And then you fucked your ankle that weekend too, I think. So, Oh, yeah. I know. Which was rough times. Then that week, Tiff got sick. And then like two days later, I got sick. And then about the same time I got sick, you got sick, and I had yeah. just a regular flu, nothing to report back. I was back drinking in seven days. I had a nice time off, Which... slept all weekend. Everything kind of worked out well for me. Now, your story is uh, partially, essentially, why we took a bit longer a break, and it was very hectic. And if anyone follows you on Instagram or uh, Facebook at Notion Baby, they might have seen the post where you kind of broke it down and, um, yeah. you know. I'll let you take it from here, man. Yeah, well, I took a turn. The old, uh, the old health. So basically, I went to Iron Maiden concert in Hamilton uh, on the twelfth with a dear friend, DJ Digital Junkie of the Movement Fam. Mikey P in the place to be. So he's like, hey. sorry, 
mad love monkey p so he's like oh you can't i got some free tickets to iron maiden let's go and i'm like let's fucking rock out cunt so we go wake up the next morning i basically have the worst sore throat in the history of sore throats um absolute like you know absolutely fucked fever all that shit bedridden for two days i get up on the saturday and i go to the doctor he's like yeah you're fucked you got strep throat here's some shit so i go get the shit i'm gonna keep this as simple as possible i'm just gonna like high high level yeah (laughs) yeah so then um, I got the first dose. I got some amoxicillin with some other words on the end. So I had that. And then after two or three days of having it, I had this crazy reaction, just kept on getting worse on the one side of my neck, mad red skin. It was inflamed and it spread down like the rash went down to like, I guess my nipples on my chest. Like it was right down the center, really weird. So I called the doctor and they're like, oh yeah, you got to fucking get some new shit so i went to a different clinic because the one was closed that i went to when you say new shit then, did they think they new, thought it was a reaction to the antibiotics to the first part to the first yes. kind that whatever they gave me initially and said like okay this obviously isn't working let's try this and i'm like okay cool so i had the first tablet of the next lot and it just got double as worse double as quick spread to the other side the redness and the inflammation and then the redness on my skin irritation went further south and i was like fuck it was still on my chest but this was getting closer to just just getting lower and i was like fucking hell so i called these cunts and they were like i have no idea so i was like fucking hell i took myself to the hospital and then got uh blood test ct scan and they said uh you have a massive abscess in your neck and you need emergency sur- uh, surgery like literally asap and i'm like okay no worries so then how they did called you in. feel when you heard that because you would just ha- essentially you thought yeah. you kind of had a flu or a strep throat but it was kind of a lot of flu symptoms with the sore throat and you're exhausted and blah 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 how do you feel yeah. when they were like, you have an abscess where that's something that none of us really know what, what it even is? Did you like, exactly. what did you think? Did you like, oh, fuck? Because they were kind of vague with you, yeah? At the start, they were a little vague because they didn't know entirely. And then until they actually, you know, yeah. So I was just like, okay. Like, I really didn't have time to get stressed. I'm sitting in a fucking emergency room with heaps of other cunts that have got way worse things going on. So I was kind of just like sitting quietly and I was like, hmm. And then... Okay. uh I was like, it. sounds like good. If we have to do it, then let's fucking go, dude. Like, I was not really scared about that. I was just like, well, that escalated quickly. We should probably should get on that. And then I was just like, okay. Like, I really didn't have time to sit and, like, do too much uh, reacting. I was just kind of like, let's get it done. Just just treat it like a I don't know, business transaction. Just, just get it done. So then they called in an ENT surgeon, an ear, nose, and throat surgeon. <laughs> a specialty doctor and then two other nurses that know what's going on with all that sort of procedure so by the time they all assembled like voltron angels um it was 1 30 a.m on wednesday morning 12th and i yeah went under and they gave me they basically you know as the, the youtube viewers can see um and i'll describe for the audio listeners i have basically had a three and a half inch uh incision on the left hand side of my neck and they basically drained out as much as they could. They had to go up the side of my throat to get to my saliva gland where all of the uh, the infection and the bacteria from the strep throat kind of trapped itself in my saliva gland and then created the abscess and then the reaction from the moxicillin just fucking went, it took it through the roof and the second mm. dose took it through the roof even more. So that's what happened and they had to just basically make a huge sort of channel and then uh, after they got all as much drained out as possible, and you know, they, I don't know how, how they did it. Maybe they sucked it out, or they got whatever the fuck. They got as much as they could out, and then they put a plastic drain up there and kind of just helped it seep out quicker. I was in hospital for four and a half days. Uh, it was rough as fuck. Lost about twelve pounds. Slept for probably no more than fifteen minutes in that four and a half days. I never suffered from sleep deprivation really for longer than a day in a smidge in my life. So having four and a half days of like pretty much no sleep was just genuinely probably the hardest bit about everything. Mm. I wouldn't set up on anyone. It was fucking insane. I felt like I was going like manic. I felt like I was like just, yeah, losing my shit. It was really difficult, but I just tried to be as meditative as possible and sit there and breathe and concentrate on just like nice things and think and listen to music that makes me sing and like fucking get goosebumps and shit. I shared a room with a lovely uh 67 year old trini man and he was uh he had some stomach dramas but we were just chatting and shooting the shit so that was really nice uh the nurses at the michael garren hospital were fucking just angels in scrubs it was so good uh everyone was really nice and uh yeah man so five days in almost five days in hospital 
And then since then, I've just been going to uh, medical clinics to get my gauze and stuff swapped out. Haven't been in any real pain since I, since the anesthesia wore off. Dead ass. I've been really good since. Um, That's really good, eh? Yeah, man. Like I haven't even been taking Advil really unless it gets really bad. <clears throat> after they you know poke and prod and they have to measure the depth of the fucking hole so it used to be like eight centimeters long and it's less than four now so i've healed over halfway in two weeks i've been eating a high protein diet and fucking just you know because i was in hospital for so long and have been on antibiotics and just so ill for probably two and a half weeks my tolerances for weed and alcohol have been reset so my whole stomach is just fantastic i've had some issues with that in the past so like yeah just getting um the the full reset has just been probably one of the best things that's happened to me in a long long time so yeah i'm just uh eating like an absolute champion whenever i want full appetite no dramas um I'm less less anxious less everything thinking clearer just feeling better sleeping better i've also been really like really on my sleeping schedule like i need to make sure i go to bed at the same time i've only fucked up once in two weeks since i've been out of the hospital and recovering so like it's been honestly nothing but positive positives and i've been feeling like a fucking sick cunt again dude so i've been just trying to slowly get um back to to wait so i can get uh you know i I just want to get back on my mountain bike and thrash the trails before uh jack frost comes and fucks it all up when can you go back on the bike i already have been doing little jib sessions around the my local areas and just like you know bunny hopping on and off stuff and just doing little hit side hits and fun things that I've, you know, noticed going to the skate park, but I haven't brought, I haven't gone to the trails trails. <clears throat> I don't want to exert myself physically too much. Cause it is still a big fucking open wound on my neck. Yeah. Um, so I'm just trying to like get some sort of like physical, just, just the, that little small sessions and local things I've been doing has been awesome. Cause I love being on the bike, whether I'm on my city bike or my trail bike. So yeah, man, just uh, getting back into it and uh, just, yeah, feeling better every day. So I'll be probably hitting the actual trails uh, at later, either later this week if it doesn't rain too much or the following week for sure. Okay. That's great, Just light, light, light work, but, yeah, we're getting back to shape, mate. It, that's It's really good that everything is a positive in the end. Like that, yeah. I was like, we were texting the entire time because you thought you were just popping in and you I, are, yeah. you, you and I are... Yeah. A, no, not at all. You didn't expect that shit at all. You and I are sort of like averse to unnecessary medical attention, uh, mostly just because it's not, I don't know. I don't have, I, I definitely believe in medicine, but I just haven't had many great experiences with doctors. They didn't seem to really give yeah. a fuck. So I typically just tend to ignore it because I used to always go to the doctor growing up and it, they never really did much and just tried to throw some pills at you that didn't do anything. So I just kind of got frustrated mm-hmm. with that. I know you feel that same same way. So I was really happy that you decided to go because you were sort of worried and you weren't getting that proper attention from the the walk-ins and stuff. Cause it's really hard. People don't like to get a family doctor in Canada in Montreal. We had one, but we still didn't really like her. And we, it took 450 days or something on a waiting list to get it. So when that, we just put our names down as soon as we found, we we tried to get one. We're like, Oh, they go basically a year and a half. And we're like, okay. And then we got one and it was fine. It was just, she didn't give a fuck. We never met her. It was always over the phone. Yeah, so like, hard. yeah. And I imagine it's good. We haven't even got changed our health card over here yet to the Ontario. Word, it's yeah, just an yeah. annoying you know, step you got to do. But um, it was cool that they were able to really take care of you. And you went there not expecting to stay overnight, let alone for four and a half fucking days. Yeah. That which was pretty is crazy. wild. Crazy. Um, lucky you had the, your good friend and neighbor who took care of, uh, Oris, your tortoise, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Came and fed my little man and, uh, topped up my plants and shit, brought me a toothbrush so I could keep it 1000 in there. And, uh, yeah, it was cool, man. Like that really helped. And what a sick just, yeah, just, uh, you know, I was, I reached out to, to you and, and my, my closest couple and, uh, really didn't want to tell people about it. Cause I really didn't fucking know yet, even though I was in hospital chilling and shit, like I didn't know exactly what happened until literally friday it's sunday the 30th on friday just gone i went to see the dr iskander my uh ent surgeon at sunnybrook and he was just like man mm-hmm. fucking he i asked him for the report and i emailed it to you and mum. this shit was crazy i didn't know all that stuff until literally over the weekend just before the weekend so yeah i didn't really know much so i didn't really have much to tell cunts other than oh, i'm in hospital and then you know i didn't want to have to 
to keep people in the unknown. Like I wanted to actually be like, Hey, this is what happened. And then give everyone the information. I don't want them to be anxious and worried. And so I was kind of like keeping it to the tightest circle, to like even possibly. Yeah. I, there's a lot of people that I didn't give a shout that I should have, but I did really didn't want to put them in the position of like Brad's fucked up, but we don't really know. I don't want to do that to anybody. So that was kind of like, you know, just scaring people, people for, yeah, for I didn't want any no attention. Like that. It wasn't about that. I was just one didn't want to scare cunts. Cause like, I didn't know how serious it was yet. So I didn't want to be like, Hey, I'm going to fuck, but I don't know. Like, I just didn't want to do that to people. So yeah. Yeah. And then I posted it on Instagram and just told people like, Hey man, everything's cool. This is what happened. Just so you know, everything's straight. Cause it was, yeah, it was, would have been hard to like, I probably should have just done like one message and copied and pasted it. But anyway, that's how she goes. I wasn't in the mood to be like doing that shit while I was fucked up either. No, you were sleep deprived too. The last thing you want that's to be doing. I didn't want to use my phone. <laughs> hurt. My eyes were burning like I've never, never felt on a burning level in my fucking entire life. Even eye drops couldn't save me, dog. It was horrible. Mm. How long did you sleep for when you got back? Like, did you do like a, mm. a massive one? Nah. When I, as soon as I got back, um, I ate. And I was, cause the hospital food kind of just mm, mm. wasn't the best after a little bit. Like Brecky was fire to BH, but like everything else was a bit, whatever. Um, so Vegas can't be choosing, food. but exactly. And mm -hmm. um, just like my stomach wasn't having it. I need to get back to my, like, cause I have like a really healthy smoothie. I have lots of um, healthy snacks during the day. And I, you know, it's just different. My whole body was like, what the fuck? Where's all the good shit you feed me, mate? So like I've, everything just kind of like, shut down a lot so yeah came home ate a bunch of good stuff and then i had like a three hour sleep woke up and i was like oh what the fuck it didn't even feel real man so then i showered and fucking then i, I stayed up and cleaned and got myself got my place all uh, up to scratch as much as i could and then i slept probably like six hours that night later on so oh, and then wow. then after that and I, then i was getting back to like seven hours uh, eight hours so so not even after four days of basic sleep deprivation, you didn't just pass out for 24 hours. No, it was like, yeah, I was in little spurts. I couldn't cause like, I just, I was in too much pain also um, because That's I couldn't fine. lay on, I, I can only lay on the one side and shit. So anyway, but yeah, Mads is good. We're okay. fucking out here and uh, back in the yeah. building, back in business, back. thugged it out, yep. got that shit done. Now you got uh, a do are you gonna have a scar? Pretty sure it's going to be hefty. Mm. Like I said, the whole opening is like three and a half inches wide. And then there's like one part which looks like a fucking toonie. But at the moment, I guess it's more like an eyeball because it's a little more closed over. Yeah. Um, it's getting closer, but like it has to heal from the inside out. That's why it takes so long. Mm. Okay. Doing it because it has to heal from the inside out. Because if it seals on the outside, it'll create a pocket and then all this bacteria and bullshit will just do it all over again. So I'm not really about that life. So slow and steady on the heel for the actual cut. But yeah the worst part's been gone good man crazy yeah. story bro yeah it's, man uh, kind of fucked up so it was it was fine it was almost like it was an interesting time it's been like just a fucking weird year man there's just so much happening yeah. just so not, much not, not, lots of change and lots of randomness all positive in the end fortunately absolutely. For, yeah mad silver linings it's insane yeah. the blessing come through from this it's fucking insane love it which is hella dope so um i'm very happy you're back in action and we thought all right now the, we're giving you a bit more time to rest um yeah you know i needed a bit of time to get over the car i don't know like i got pretty fucked up by that shit as seasonal. Well. seasonal shit mate well it was all the family was sick i think it was a, probably a Brought bit of, flu to you. yeah right fuck they were all, <laughs> like everyone was here just coughing and sneezing and stuff like it was hilarious it was eight there was okay. 10 of us in the crib. So it's almost like probably lucky you didn't come in the end because it was just, uh, it was a bit, I think just everyone was exhausted with, like you said, weather change. I think that was a part of it. No yeah. one had like the flu, but and everyone, it was almost like everyone was like pre-sick. So like yeah. they, they were about to get it. And then I felt good the whole time. And then the end ball. But um, one thing, you mentioned the natural thing. We got, we went to, there's a dope store in Ontario called Healthy Planet, which is just like a, um, yeah. kind of like an organic kind of grocery store. Plus they have all uh, supplements, fucking Vitamins. whatever, fire, all, all that type of, you know, like a health food store type shit. Yeah, yeah. And they had CMOS, um, which you and I, I don't know if we talked about it on the pod before. We, we've oh, talked about it in yeah. real life. So yeah, CMOS is something that's just like this superfood that's literally just shit from the sea and then you sort of soak it, it expands and then you kind of like blend it up with a bunch of stuff to make it gel. 
Um, so we managed to get a packet of that. So I'm very excited to try that because apparently it just fixes everything and, and all a lot, a lot of health problems. And I found a new juice bar here in Hamilton mm. that uh, sells the gel. So they got regular yeah. gel, mango, and strawberry flavors. Um, that's it's not cheap. It's like thirty five bucks for a mason jar of it, and I think the packet we got was like it must have been like twenty five. But you think we have to process it, and you just put like this gel in your smoothies and, and blah blah blah. That's Apparently, it's just sounds tight. Well, it gets rid of lots of mucus, and it just gets it cleans your system from all the all the, mainly mucus. That's the main focus, right? I believe so. I've got to we we look. We did a ton of research a while ago, but we never we didn't know you could get it anywhere. At least when we were in Quebec, we never saw it. We're gonna yeah. get it on Amazon, but we're just always so confused as to like which one. Which one to actually get? Yeah. So then we just like uh, we saw it at Healthy you Planet. Want synthetic version that'd be that'd suck. No, I hope the one we got. You're supposed to get like wild cultivated or some shit like that is the the word. So I don't right. know if that's even what we got to be honest. But I'm just excited to try that. And then you also mentioned cleaning stuff out. So Tiff's mom had um, she had like the family when they came from the UK. They had. The, she had them over for like a month. So she was basically sleep not like, you know, when the way the family tends to work, like if there's older people, so she had her mother, so Tiff's grandma, and then another lady that um, was a close family friend who's also sort of grandma's age. So they both got Tiff's mom's bed and then Tiff's mom took like a air mattress in the living room. So, you know, she's not young. It's probably not optimal for her to be sleeping on an air mattress for yeah, damn near a month. And then, you know, all these family things, she's cooking for everyone. She's still working during that time and then having to entertain everyone. All the, you know, it, it took a lot out of her. She got super sick by the end of it. So we thought, look, I know she went through it. So we were like, we just got her like a, a, a gift voucher for like a spa so she could get oh, like a right. massage. A little just pepper some, Yeah, just some little small just to be like, look, man, like, you know, take care of you. That's why I want to get you, still want to get you some food and stuff because you went through it and shit. Just, you yeah, had to right adjust up. back into it. Just like, this is what we're all here for. We're going to take care of each other. So she went on Friday, today's Sunday. She went on Friday, got the massage and this like clay thing. And it was all detox, like deep tissue, like massage that really like got rid of stuff. Yeah. So then yesterday, she knew me, her and Tiff, a lot of, uh, I've seen a lot of uh, women talk to their mother like multiple times a day, which I think is really cute because we never do that as dudes. And obviously we have a time difference situation yeah, true. and whatever. So we didn't really do that and I'd never seen anyone do that, but she, Tiff and her mom talk all the time and, um, her mom didn't call her during that. So she calls her like seven, eight o'clock last night. She's like, hello, forget about me. I'm, you know, you're uh, and then, <laughs> but she answered the phone like, hello. And she oh, was all, no. she because. was that I didn't know this, but when you do a detox, um, massage, it makes you like, she couldn't eat. Like she'd been puking. How was your mom? I'm just, we're talking about Brad's She's situation. Now. She's good now? Uh, I haven't checked in with her since this afternoon. Okay. She's still with Crazy dog. So she hasn't eaten since probably Friday. They didn't tell her. So apparently when you have the detox, putty. Okay. Um, I'll give you the thing as well. Sorry, because Barrington has been a little frisky most of the time. So uh, it's one Yeah, he's, he's, he's galloping around on your lap. I get it. He's, he's chilling. It's, it's his dinner time as well. So He's a good he's boy. A, he's a good, good old bad up. Oh, get your rope, buddy. Um... So uh, <laughs> it's hilarious. Maybe he sees Tiffy's just jumping oh, around. I love it. Right? Oh, you're so cute. Um, thanks, babe. So she, she was basically on Friday night. They didn't tell her. So apparently, when you have these these types of detox things, just yeah. on that on that topic, you're supposed to drink like a fuck ton of water um, gotcha. and be very careful what you eat. They didn't because your body is. I think what it kind of does, like they, she has some sort of clay. I heard the words clay and neck. So I don't, I think they put this mud shit on you and maybe, you know, how you yeah. put those things on the bottom of your feet and you can rip it off yeah. and it's, it's all black. Proper. Okay. I, I think I remember you telling me that now. Yeah. So, you know, I think there might be parts of the body that, uh, it, release. exactly right. So maybe that's right. what the clay thing did. Right. But they didn't tell her like, Hey love, like when you go home tonight, don't drink no, alcohol. But- don't have sugar, blah, blah, blah. Just drink or whatever the rules are. They didn't tell her anything. So she had wine. She had some food. Like she had a pampering day because she was like, I had a massage. Now I'm going to yeah, have some fun. wine. Yeah, let's get She fancy. didn't get drunk. She doesn't drink as much as she as she used to. So, you know, just one glass with dinner or whatever. And then she goes to work yesterday. And um, she said she was in work and she, in the start of the day or whatever. She was she puked multiple times, went all over her pants and shoes. She couldn't have to like... 
went to go get something and had to run outside to go and, uh, and, and puke. She's like, what the fuck? She just had to pull over when she was driving home to vomit. And she Truth. went, she couldn't keep down anything at all. Even just looking at stuff made her sick. So she'd been vomiting basically nonstop all day to the point where there's nothing to throw up. It's just bile. And oh, um, we were going to send her via like Uber Eats and you can, like the groceries I was telling you about, to send her some yep. like um, Pedialyte or Gastrolyte, just like the electrolyte yep. powder. Um, yep. But she had those, um, I don't know if you've seen, it's called Emergency, Emergen-C. It's a vitamin C packet. That's like, yep. yeah, It's like Baraka almost, but vitamin C. Exactly right. And they have electrolytes in it. So she had that. So we were like, okay, yeah. maybe try that. She goes, she poured tea, had to get rid of it, had that had to get rid of it because she's just puking and then today even the same thing so going from a detox and i don't know if it's because if if it would have changed anything that um if she had water on the friday when she had the thing to now but like that's fucking wild that a maybe detox... you have to go with there really hydrated or something like that beforehand because like you know your body's about to go through that shit you i don't think she knew yeah, well, that's they probably should tell clients like this. Be like, hey, man, this is your first this time. This is very intense, exactly. So I said that's the fucking tip. Wow, that's like they have a duty of care to like, you know, to the clients. Be like, hey, this is pretty intense on your body. Make sure you know this stuff. That sounds kind of like they didn't do their job, mate. That's kind of fucked though. Yeah, man. So it's wow, like what an intense uh, thing to go. Super through. intense experience, and I wondered if maybe um, the like any like depending on like how obviously we all eat and drink we didn't drink alcohol we don't always eat good and blah 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 so i imagine all of us have many years of many decades yes. of just shit built shit. up that maybe we totally kind of detox but kind of don't and if you really get that like where they're squishing your body and squishing your organs yeah. to really like ex- a sponge like and it screeches it into almost. your system and then your system has to get rid of it and you know right. that's one way like you get sick I just had, I obviously my body has some shit I had to get rid of. You get sick, you're coughing and spluttering and mucus and blah, blah, yeah. blah. So with detox, it's just interesting that it caused, she's like, I was funny, we're joking about like, fuck, I'd much rather have diarrhea than just be puking the whole time. Cause you can't, Christ, it, yeah. I feel like you just can't do, you can do everything, but you sort of can't cause you have to almost keep a bucket with you at all times. Or like if you diarrhea, at least it's kind of comes in spurts or whatever the fuck and spurts. Get <laughs> turn the tap on, turn the tap off. <laughs> exactly. Then, oh, oh, it's leaking. And then off you go. But, um, Jesus Christ. yeah, because I've always wanted to do that shit, but now I'm like, a I feel like, lot you, it, mate. yeah, I feel like you might be right. It's almost like you got to go into it, having a very light food beforehand, being extraordinarily, like have a couple liters of water yeah, before you go in. Crazy. And I then mean, we all need a detox, but that, that's pretty wild after effects. Fucking hell, mate. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, it could just be that, you know, obviously she's a boomer, so she's, I don't want to say how old anybody is but you know what i mean she's not young and if you've got those uh i imagine just over the decades would go you'd have just stuff if you've never done this before and she hadn't so i imagine yeah. we we Big would shock. all have similar shit um i imagine man like fucking hell because you know just a lifestyle food yeah. alcohol yeah. everything exactly we, yeah, we're eating good we're getting you know, all sorts of different shit we're putting in our body so it's uh Crazy, very man. interesting so look that's great don't want to go too many uh like tangents, it's a health segment of the podcast yeah. um there's <laughs> health been wellness the health, the health and wellness. exactly that's <laughs> good habits we'll see you good habits hey the first half of the show is good habits i'm about to smoke some weed as soon as you say go all right <laughs> and we're back on bad habits now. and we're back on here we go so we've got a few things to just want to catch up over the last few weeks that have been happening we're not going to go too deep on everything here um, what's some fun stuff that's been happening? Um, and this is kind of like in, uh, you know what, let me start with this one. So I always talk, you know, we talked about the, the weed drink I, I have every podcast. Um, yes. in Quebec, I used to order just from the, the only place you could get it was the government store, the SQDC. They had some decent beverages, but they had no other real fun stuff aside from oils for me. Cause I just do edible stuff. Um, the OCS, the Ontario cannabis store is fucking Fire. Yeah, the, kid in the candy store, eh? Bro, I dropped... Because you get 30 <laughs> grams of weed in each thing, in each that's order. A, you're allowed to order. Oh, and, and, they're, and they're six and whatever. <laughs> so, exactly right. So, the drinks yeah. have a lot more, but then the gummies have fuck all. So, I got like 15 packets of gummies, 
all yes, different bro. types. I got the like pop rocks, like it's a like ten oh. milligram pop rocks. That's um, so fun to eat. Coffee, like a, a pour over coffee thing, green, so I can just put it in the V sixty or the Chemex and yes, pour over. Yes. Ten milligrams. What else did I get? Um, I got a whole bunch of different drinks. So I this one, the strawberry whackery, which is yeah. a funny name, and um, a bunch of other ones like Ace Hill, which is a brewery that we don't know them, but you know, craft brewery in Toronto. They have a uh, cannabis company now called Ace Valley. So I got some of their gummies and their drinks. Oh, nice! Just to try, try their drink. Yeah, just to see what's up with that. They seem pretty cool, but like it's interesting. There's just so many. There's so much more variety here compared to Quebec. It was just really exciting for me because yeah. when you don't have many uh, options, it kind of like oh, okay, I just have these drinks and like I get the gummies from here or something like that. But now I just got eight trillion of them. They're all like his. There's two. There's two point five. There's five. There's ten. There's like all. Wow, how lit do I want to get? Like tonight, I'm like, look through all the drinks. I'm like, oh, this is oh, six good. THC, not bad. I like that. Six CBD, okay. That feels like last time I had ten, I was fucking ratchet, bro. I was very high. I have a, I have a couple of fun stories about my drinks lately because I haven't been smoking weed or drinking alcohol since the twelfth. I just started smoking weed, like in a, you know, very, very, very lightly. And also, again, shout out to Mikey P. Um, he has a little something, something in his backyard, which is, you know, completely legal in Canada. And he dropped me off, uh, you know, a couple samples. And uh, coming back out of hospital on the, you know, a couple of days later, I had, you know, my regular strength weed, which actually fucking blew my tits off. I got high school high and got really fucked up. So Love it. I was like, hell no. I had to meditate and breathe, breathe myself through the high. It was so intense, bro. I, it was scary high. Like I was like... I understand why people that don't smoke weed, if they have some strong shit for the first time, why cunts have anxiety attacks and actually flip out and go, oh, weed's not for me. I, I had one it's of those lot. moments. Almost. It was fucking crazy. Anyway, because I haven't had any sort of massive tolerance break for more than like three or four days for a decade or longer. It's always, you know, fairly consistent. Um, so anyway, I got, I've got been getting onto the drinks and uh, I got the collective arts ones because they have, have a couple. I got a mango one, which was 10 milligrams, and uh, a coconut flavor one, which was like five. Where'd you get that from? That's lit. Um, yeah, I got them as a gift as, as soon as I got out of hospital. But so, um, ah, I should find so out yeah, where they get them. I want to try this. Yeah, I'll yeah. ask. And it was, it was proper. So the, the, mm. the Collective Arts ones were really nice. The orange mango flavor was amazing. It looked like a fucking hazy IPA. <laughs> it had all the characteristics so, of an IPA. It, and... The other coconut one was cool, but it was a little skunky towards the end. So that was like fresh out of, um, you know, a couple of days out of hospital. I had those, not in the same day, but like the 10%, 10 milligram one got me like vibrate mm. My body it was vibrating like I'm fucking high. I was like, oh shit, this is actually got working. Because I've had drinks before when my tolerance was like through the roof, when I was smoking two, three joints a day of strong stuff. Like I didn't feel high from those when I had them before. Right. So that that rocked me. So then fast forward a week and a half. Uh, so Wednesday just gone. Um, I ended up going to the weed shop on my corner and uh, just fucking open. There's one on two blocks down. There's one right next to me. So I, I checked it out and uh, I got a brand called Keef, K-E-E-F. And they had this flavor called Orange Crush, uh, <clears throat> Orange, Orange Kush Crush. And it literally, dude tastes like fucking Fanta and it was 10 milligrams. I was absolutely floored. <clears throat> it tastes like literally like a regular soda, like a regular fucking dude, Fanta, swear to God. So it was expensive. It was like eight or $9 for the drink in a, in a regular short sort of stubby can, but the taste was incredible. I fucking loved it. So that's my new shit now. Cool, man. That makes me happy because yeah. I'm heavily into that and it's cool to see. I know you always didn't like the um, the feeling the of edible. it is not always comfortable for me especially when i'm eating shit like if i'm eating the gummies i'll feel like i'm just fucking wired as and then my body starts feeling like it doesn't want to cooperate with what my brain's telling it to do so i feel a little disconnected uh, how with the that's completely fair how many brands have you tried of drinks of drinks or gummy i guess what i'm saying is that like just All like, the edible gummies i'll probably like two or three different ones like you're probably going to try 20 and yeah, see if, if they all make you feel that way, then you're like, that doesn't work for me. Yeah. Because I think there's like, and I try to get like, you know, ones that are like one-to-one. -one. Like this drink is one-to-one -one THC I'll CBD, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or try one that's 20 milligram CBD and one milligram THC or something. And try one right. that's 
10 mm. THC, zero CBD. But, and just try all the different versions. So that's what I tried to do in this last order. And I got like, for 100 bucks, I think I got like 20 items or something, which is a lot. Almost like, that's crazy, dude. Of like, yeah, everything was about dude. five bucks a pop. Yeah, I'm, bro, I'm so stocked. It's, uh, and I got oil out of the dick hole. I edibles in my, oil out the dick hole. Oh, <laughs> so much oil. that check, right? Yeah. <laughs> Leaking. On the medical medical tip. No, I've got some edibles in the cupboard for you. I've got uh, some more. It looks like it's Chips Ahoy or Doritos or something like that. One of those. Let's go. I've been scared like, to have the Doritos you gave me because they're 500 milligrams in the packet, but it doesn't tell just, you. Just break off the corners of the chips, mate. Don't, don't. That's what I was going to do. Lightly. I'm very, oh my dude, I've been, if anyone's, uh, everyone who's walk, had slowly. the, yeah, yeah, I've had the, I've had the, um, the edible problems i've had i've had the what's it what's it called just the shit circumstances in the past so i'm very careful if i don't know that's why i love the government shit i guess like fuck the government of course like we all feel but like i love that they're controlled as far as this has this much in it because when we used to make them everything's Mm. unevenly dispersed like no one this one might be 50 milligrams and you don't know this one might be five and it's the same cookie from the same batch it's just all the butter clumped up on that one bunch of dough yeah it didn't go Take you know the moon. so and that yeah i've had so many bad experiences so, like way more bad experiences than the average person because i've been doing edibles exclusively for 13 years now yeah um that's crazy dude so i've been there and done that pretty crazy where a lot of people might just do them occasionally but i've been doing them weekly for yeah, essentially the monster. so they call me ah, ah. so cookie, cookie, monster? cookie monster i like cookie monster that should be my halloween yeah. okay yeah, yeah, that's what you should do for the next one. Actually, we get you a, a weed, the weed cookie monster. So it'd be like not exactly Oscar the Grouch. Almost oh, like a green more, cookie monster. It's like a, it's like half halfway between blue and green. What are we like teal? What are you? Yeah, your turquoise cookie monster. Oh, I like that. That's great. Could be sweet. Yeah, and you just got some like hat, like, like a hat with the weed ta- leaf. Animals to your fur and shit. <laughs> yeah, hey, take one, kids. Take one, kids. Hey, don't tell your dad. Come to my house uh, tomorrow <laughs> night, guys. It's fucking on for you, little cunts. Oh, I'm gonna catch the train down and come come dressed up like a dickhead and try to get all your candy. You can do it. We went and bought some today. We got this. It's all gone, bro. We went to I went to a supermarket, went to Walmart, and Walmart hardly oh, had anything. You have to go at the start of the month when they first. I didn't know. Yeah, box it up. When you, bro. Yeah, when man. you at the house hey man, uh, situation. He comes in the apartment. Like no one comes in the condo knocking on my door. So that's exactly. that's really cool. And if you do want cunts knocking on your door, they put decorations on, and I just don't have any. Mm. I, I ain't, I'm trying to give away chocolate like that, bro. I'm going to eat it. I'm going to eat I'm it. Thinking. I'm thinking. Replenish my energy after going for a big for something. A big ride. So, big ride, exactly. Love right. it. So, Love it. Chuckies, that's the vibe. So that's the Halloween shit. And this is my other little transition. Um, I finally got – so I'm always in this in, – I'm trying to still figure out where I'm going to do the podcast here. So I got the Yeezy wall here. Um, I can actually just show y'all if I can just pan this across. So for the BOS set, oh, that is slutty. We got LED lights at the back of the thing, and I got the LED um, custom sign, right? So I was, I just before I started tonight, I found on Amazon they have. I've got the LED thing in the corner, and mm. it's like a um, you can you have to plug. I got two strips of it, like fifty feet each. So I, the back of that, I just manually wound it around yeah, yeah. the thing. Just, and just with, with it's got tape on it, so boom, boom. So I've got a, a second one, but I was thinking of even like getting extension cord, and then for the it's like a special four pin extension, and then mm. putting it behind all of the Yeezy things Ooh, here. Yeezy collection. And then I finally put the shit on the wall for the studio area, so it kind of looks cool. So that might be like a cool look where this is lit up, and then you got the studio in the background that's basically ready to go now. I was thinking that for the set for bad habits because I could just I like use all the same shit. Um, and speaking of the Yeezys, my friend Josh, shout to Josh Telfer, who's been on the pod for um, the hey. Relentless series. Uh, he lives in Vancouver or uh, Victoria, actually, in BC. And he went to Winners and they had Yeezy socks there because I think there's been some sort of fuck up where I didn't think the socks because the socks weren't properly released, they were like from the, um, the fashion show season seven. So like, okay. <laughs> I I got them online. I've had a bunch of pairs. I had some stolen recently from our front porch. The motherfuckers, um, I've been trying to get. Fuck? Yeah, it's uh, pr- I was pretty pissed. So then he messaged me, and they they had the same ones that I ordered, but for like twenty five bucks. So he went he went and got me like That's four crazy. four batches of them. 
And then I met him at the airport because he came into Toronto. So that was kind of fun to see Josh had the thing for a minute. Oh, yeah. And to pick up the Yeezy socks was just funny because he always gives me shit. He hates the shoes. And <laughs> Does he? He's, hey, almost all of them he thinks are ridiculous. Oh, my God. What a funny cunt. So then him buying Yeezy socks and then having this whole thing was very funny to me. Um, oh, that. And then the obvious uh, springboard from talking about that was uh, over the yeah, last... Yeah, you didn't burn your Yeezys. I did not burn my Yeezys. I will not be burning my Yeezys. I am not a uh, knee-jerk reactor in that way. That's true. Yeah. So I guess everybody kind of knows the Kanye stuff that's been happening over the last, what, like month maybe? Month, yeah. He's been just uh, going on Instagram and saying some pretty inflammatory shit about um, a variety of topics. Um you know, he's done it before. You know, he said the slavery was a choice stuff on TMZ a few years back, which is pretty fucked up. Um, you know, everyone tried to cancel him. Forgive, obviously, you know, people love the music, people love the shoes and stuff. So they forget, uh, you know, get over it. And then um, he went on Drink, Drink Champs and he, mm-hmm. right when he, the day after he did this tweet, said, I'm going DEFCON 3 on, on Jews. And I was like, okay. This is about to be for pretty hectic. And he went pretty nuts on Drink Champs. Um, I won't go too yeah. deep into it because I imagine everybody has probably seen it by now. Um, yeah. Just because it is kind of getting old. He went on Drink Champs. He said that George Floyd died. Apparently, there's a documentary that shows that George Floyd died of fentanyl and the cop's knee wasn't um, pressing on his neck to stop the airflow. Um, even though he was already kind of convicted of that, from what I understand. So it's mm-hmm. pretty crazy. And now the George Floyd's... Um, the, I don't know if they were married, but his girlfriend or the mother of his daughter um, was suing Kanye for $252 million, even after Kanye gave them $2 million, because he was tweeting, he posted that today. Uh, when, when George Floyd died, he gave them money. Um, yeah. What else did he say? And he was talking about like the Jewish executives, Jewish media, like kind of like lumping people together, which obviously is never a good thing when you lump groups, mm. you know, individuals yeah, who... Drug. It's never because it's never accurate. You can't say if this person happens to be of this ethnicity, religion, whatever thing you can group someone in, then their behavior represents all of those other people. Um, yeah. Obviously, it's never correct. Uh, there might be a lot of other people who act like that, but you can't say all of them because it's just fundamentally untrue. So he was saying a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Then he went on uh, Good Morning, even before Drink Champs. I think he went on Good Morning America. He went on uh, CNN with Chris Cuomo um, and kind of doubling down on all the drink champ stuff. Um, Nori even walked it back. Nori went on an apology tour the next day um, yeah. on Hot 97, Power 105, with Breakfast Club, all that, saying, look, I regret it. I shouldn't have done it, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> but obviously he was only doing it because he's losing money and he's not – Yeah. He, he wanted the clicks and, and shit that comes with it. Of course. Uh, he – what else happened? And then he went on Piers Morgan the uh, British dude. And um, then the latest one, he was on Lex Friedman's podcast, which I've, I've been watching a Twitch streamer that we like react to it and watch him where he keeps pausing it and does commentary on it, which is definitely something we could probably even do. Yeah. Yeah, Like he makes a two hour interview go for four and a half hours on the actual (laughs) video because it's a, you're going nonstop and constantly pausing whatever. Um, so that's basically where he's at right now. And he, uh, he's had a lot of pushback. Adidas dropped him. So to be fair, he's wanted to get out of that deal with Adidas and Gap because he said he's basically Adidas have been dropping colorways without him uh, that he didn't approve. Um, wow. Gap didn't do a lot of things, which I think we talked about on here. They weren't using the Yeezy mailing list of 3 million people. They were supposed to open Yeezy stores and they didn't. Um, blah, blah, blah. So he's getting fucked from a business angle. Hmm. And he wanted out of the contract. So it almost seemed like all of this behavior was to get out of the contracts, which may or may not be true. Um, Who knows? Because it Mm. seems like on the surface... Wow, that's a hot take. That's what I've seen people say, and it sort of makes sense. But he's burning his legacy and his name and reputation to the ground in the meantime because the thing about it all is it's very inflammatory. And it also went to show... This is all stuff I've seen people say. Some folks were saying, well... He said all this shit about black people over the years that black you know, slavery was a choice and all this shit about George Floyd. So he's, he's like shitting on his own people and there's basically nothing happens. Shoes keep selling, clothes selling, music selling, getting booked for shows, nothing changes. You say one thing about Jewish people, his fucking life is taken down, which is essentially proving his point that 
these Jewish individuals and the sort of overall Jewish media mafia are targeting him to take him down when mm. that's ended up that that's what happened um, after he said all this stuff. Yeah. Uh, I still don't think uh, like I'm not I'm not saying I believe in it, I, but I'm saying that the 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 fact it's like it's like almost like it's proving his own point, but the point that it's not proving is that everyone is doing this in in concert, like everyone is planned, and it's this thing where all Jews get in a room together, like ah, how we gonna fuck him? It's just they happen to be the powerful people, and the people that continually yeah. fuck him happen to be Jewish. So it's unfortunate, but that's what you can put two and two together, and it might feel like after a while that all of these people from this persuasion are targeting me, and that's probably why he, he thought that's what it was. So. I know. I was like, "Oh, could this all be some master plan where he gets out of the deals, and then mm. you know what's going to happen?" Um, Man, that'll be know. a great fucking, uh, biopic when it's uh, when it's finished. Then, I mean, or documentary, either one. Documentary, it's going to be I mean, nuts. Yeah. So you mentioned earlier, and the reason we were doing it about burning Yeezy. So some people were actually posting themselves burning their shoes. I mean, these are not yeah. cheap shoes, right? They're not easy to get, and they're not cheap at retail. It's not cheap, and most people pay secondary. Um, so the people are burning fucking thousands and thousands of dollars worth of shoes for no reason. Um, which is very strange. And like, you know, funny thing, the day before that all happened, we just ordered, they did, I, I wanted to get you one for your birthday. I didn't realize how quickly they would sell, but they re-released the Gap hoodies, the Gap Easy um, mm-hmm. uh, hoodies, which are my favorite. I love it. It's the best hoodie I've ever owned, but then they sold out. So we ended up getting one for TIFF. All the bigger sizes sold, unfortunately. Um, and I just, I thought, oh, they're not going to send it. Like, this is fucked. But I got the order thing. It's like in transit today. Hey, like, they're not nice, fucking nice. people with the orders. Um, and it's going to be interesting to see what happens with the shoes in the short term, yeah. depending on the blowback situation. Uh, pause. Because. I'll fully pause. Good pause one, that. Good one. Like, what can happen, right? Like, will it continue to get worse? And will he double down, triple down on his comments and say worse shit? And then he, everyone was just like, I can't, I don't want anything to do with this guy. Or, you know, and then throw the value of all the shoes and clothes that just disappear. Or will it be the other way around? Because Adidas aren't making Yeezys anymore. Gap aren't doing it anymore. And who knows if he's going to do it independently. Are all the resellers are just going to get their prices put up because now these things, are, there is no more supply to keep it at a mm. low rate. So anyone trying to buy Yeezys is going to pay top dollar um, on StockX or GoTo or whatever. So it's going to, it could go either way. Then the other thing that could happen, apparently Adidas owns all of the designs. Like they own the rights, right. which is weird to me that it's like a Yeezy, like Adidas is supposed to be the um, manufacturer, essentially distro while Yeezy does the design. So I think that in the contract, right. they probably use Adidas designers and Yeezy designers together. Um, I don't know how it works. So if he does go and do it himself, which would be awesome like without another partner because who's going to work with him at this point? Like, yeah, no shit. He can't use any of those designs because Adidas owns them, apparently. <clears throat> and that would mean you have to come up with new stuff. And a lot of like the 350s, they have um, the Boost. Adidas has the Boost technology, which is this white, like it looks like polystyrene, like little... Um, yeah, it's beautiful. That's why they're so comfy. So he doesn't right. have that. So what's going to happen after that? The thing about Yeezys as well, they're like the least branded shoe of all time. Like you can sort of see left in here, it says Adidas and Yeezy at the, on, on the right. insole, but that's it. There's no other branding anywhere on the shoe that says Yeezy. Like, and this is the 350, but like on none of the other models, right? So right. Adidas apparently might be making them and just call them like Adidas 350s or something. So they will be the exact mm-hmm. same thing, but without the Yeezy branding. So to me, I think that's whack as fuck. That's um, cheeky business right there. I mean, I, you know, we're have made no you know, mystery of the fact that we're all huge Kanye stands and have been since before day one type shit. Um, yeah. And I like him for, for that reason. All this aside, because it's very weird times and, and very complex um, with what's happening to him and the, like, you know, everyone's dropping him. Gap, he, uh, Adidas did. CAA, his talent agency, um, he had some shows booked at a stadium. They got all got canceled. He's fucking um, yeah, yeah, which is pretty crazy. Someone else, oh, just oh, Peloton stopped, removed all his songs from their um, catalog. Peloton's the bike, you know, exercise bike. Yeah, the, the 
interesting thing, yeah. Yeah. Um, I heard people were defacing murals of him. I wouldn't be surprised. So it's, it's gone pretty bad. And then also now you get like, I don't think, I think he's the thing with Kanye. I, he is a passionate dude who seems with this to just be repeating talking points even, as far because he takes it further and they never went deeper than surface level. So I think he's just talking out of line. He doesn't really understand what he's saying. I don't think he has hate for Jewish people because he never said anything like, go kill them. I hate them. He's just saying, I'm being attacked and targeted by this Jewish media, Jewish Hollywood, all these different people that control all these companies that are fucking him happen yeah. to be of this religion or ethno religion. So that's what he's saying. He never said anything super wild that I would consider super wild. But unfortunately, like obviously the crazy folks was like in LA, they had this thing where Kanye was over the, uh, people held banners over the freeway saying that Kanye oh, yes. was yeah. Yeah. Twitter. Fucking hell, that man. was that was pretty fucked up because those are not the people you want to be aligning with your causes. Like the basically white supremacists, I imagine. Mm. Them cunts are fucked. Um, that them cunts is fucked, and that was definitely not a good look. So a lot of like questionable folks are aligning with him because they're the ones who are already kind of racist, and they're taking his stuff. That I don't think he's being necessarily. I wouldn't call it anti-Semitic, but look, there's a whole other thing on that. I looked it up and they changed the de a definition of anti-Semitic. And it's like, that's fucking wild. which is kind of crazy to only because Semitic people, I, lo I looked this I up the other day because I kept hearing and kept saying, I'm like, I don't see hate. And I never knew much about it. I'm like, okay, so Semitic people are of Jewish and Arab origin. It's from people from that region. And it's, not, it's uh, the people, but it's also a language. You have Semitic languages, which right, I'm like, cool, I'm learning. I'm learning about this shit. So then anti-Semitic would be, I guess, anything that would be aggressive against okay. Semitic people, you'd think. But it was changed by this Israeli group this year, and it's been changed multiple times to be hostile towards the Jewish people, specifically. And I thought that was very strange. And I looked, and it even said that like Canada has um, adopted the, it's like IAHA or something, some, some body, uh, their definition of anti-Semitism, that's what it means. So if you look at it under that term, like under the what what is accepted, then you could probably consider what he's saying to be anti-Semitic. But the fact that they changed the definition is a little odd to me. Um, and they're sort of making it, it just seems a little blown out of proportion. That's all. Like people, they weren't yeah. as mad as Epstein who fucked children. And they weren't taking him down like this. And been fucked children since like, like for decades and been committed, uh, convicted of it and got to serve he only had to go to jail overnight, but he could be out all day. Or it was the other way around. I can't remember. But, you know what I'm saying? It, hell, it just, it's not really adding up a little bit. It's a little mm. strange. People would probably say that's conspiracy or some shit, but I'm just looking at facts on the internet, bro. Like, it's not anything crazy. It's, it's I feel like it was like a pile on, and it became acceptable to, you know, shit on him. So, either way, he's Roof. like, I'm not standing up for it, obviously. It's, it's just not the way you should handle it. So, that's why I'm like, it's so stupidly handled, so poorly handled. I'm like, is there, I hope there's a bigger end goal at the end of all this shit. Let's hope it's all theatrics and fucking. <sighs> Mate. Get back. Yeah, I'm hoping so too. <laughs> <laughs> if easy. Hey? So that's uh, that hectic shit. A uh, couple quick things as well. Um, Drake and 21 Savage drop an album this Friday oh, called Her for, Loss. That one. Supposed to drop Her last loss. Friday. Uh, but apparently, Forty got COVID, so he wasn't able to finish um, the mixing. And obviously, he's got MS, so it probably hits him a little harder. Um, yeah, fuck it. So he needs to finish the album. So look, I don't really like Twenty One Savage, but everyone always says that him and Drake make like every song they do is like a banger. And, uh, you know, a lot of the ones that I can think of off the top of my head that they're done together are all pretty killer. To be fair, and I, I, I just, the kids uh, do enjoy. The old twenty one. It's, it's not my, not our thing. Obviously, if you know anything about it's it, not, I'm interested to see the production, like the sound scope, the soundscape of what's going on there. And uh, obviously, Ford is one of the best engineers in the game, so I want to see what he's saying too. You know, it's always going to be fire, but like they, he does different shit for different albums. So, yeah, <clears throat> yeah, I'm keen, I'm keen to look at it from uh, Sonic's perspective. Yeah, I think that's going to be the most interesting to see. So they have, I'm sure they just got bangers with cool hooks and stuff. So. Maybe we can get drunk and fucking, ha you know, when I'm better, better and off this antibiotics. Like for my birthday, we'll get drunk and listen to the 21 Savage Drake album. 
that's how you do. That's how it's going to get down. <laughs> like imagine. Um, so okay. that's that's coming. And last Friday, Rihanna dropped a single, first single in six years. Um, did you hear it? Um, I did not. That's for the Black Panther movie, right? Exactly. So it was written by Thames, I saw. Uh, and Ooh. it's uh, essentially a tribute to Chadwick Boseman, which is super sweet. Nice. But it's a it's a ballad, like it's a slow, like there's no drums in it at all, type ballad. Oh, um, okay. It's not what you'd expect from a first, you know, time back in music, um, after such a long time. So it's cool, but I, and I saw people sort of do these memes, and they've got like them like they want to dance they wanted a banger they could dance to so all these memes on twitter yeah, like course. the the video clip playing in the background and someone standing in front like just dancing crazy to this fucking ballad which is pretty funny uh because everyone's uh, just dying for that you know rihanna banger they can bump in the club of course she's not interested i imagine she's making she's a billion billionaire from uh lingerie makeup and makeup thing. so good for her man so that's interesting um elon musk bought twitter finally that's pretty sweet, eh? Oh well, depends who you ask. Oh, okay. Well, from what I've who, seen, uh, who are we asking? Everyone, because he admitted he's a Republican, <laughs> so essentially it's just become political. Like if you're right wing, you're loving it; if you're left wing, you're not. That's what I've seen. Um, apparently, I don't know if I want to quote all the stuff, but they, people are saying that oh, since he took over, and they basically released all the all the freedom of speech restrictions to make it a more open platform which is what mm -hmm. a lot of people have been complaining about. A lot of people are getting suspended from Twitter for saying shit. There's a lot of censorship. Apparently, as soon as he came in, he fired the CEO, the head lawyer, the chick, the, the chick who um, spear, he got Trump suspended and spearheaded a lot of the content restriction stuff. They all just got fired immediately. So people are saying, like, the N-word has gone up 500x in the use of it or something. And so but it's that's pretty fucked up, but... I don't know if that's 100% true. I haven't seen any proof or anything like that. I imagine Twitter would be able to run a report on shit like that. Jesus Christ. So, yeah, the right-wing folks, because I see, like, yeah, the right-wing folks so are no, commenting. No, you can't even swear. Like, you can, you can say whatever you want. You can drop C-bombs. I think that was always there as long as it wasn't aggressive towards someone. Instagram, you can't even say it because you posted my single, recent single. Oh, yeah, I dropped singles. I should talk about that. Um, we did it. Really? You posted and you said like smash it in your face or something like that. So I oh. reposted it. With, on smash in your face was the link, the swipe up link. Yeah, that's right. And I did the oh, same wow. thing. And I got mine taken down because it was violent. Because it said that's smash it in your face. So you can't say shit. And I'm like, I don't really post anything but stuff of just music or whatever uh, on my shit. So I was pretty surprised. I thought that was pretty wild. So I think that maybe Twitter's starting to come open that. again. I'm all for the freedom of speech. A lot of people conflict that. Like I feel like every I feel like I'm making controversial comments. Depends who you ask. But people who I feel like I I'm for freedom of speech. To, and not everyone agrees with this. I'm happy to say it. I'm for it to the point of if someone says something ridiculous, you should be allowed to say it because then you're like, oh, you're a fuckwit. I'm not going to pay any attention to you and you can yeah. fuck right off because you have these ridiculous damaging ideas. I don't think it's a problem to see them, but people are saying that they think it's bad that these ideas are even allowed to be put out there because if other people see them, they could adopt them. I just think we're adults and we're, yeah, I don't make want your own fucking decisions. Don't be a dumb cunt. Fucking hell. That's basically right? what it comes down to. Don't be a dumb cunt. Don't yeah. be a racist cunt. Right. Just be a cool person. And everything's fine. But if you have some, like, I feel like there's no discussion anymore. After the last couple of years, you can't, you know, there's all of these uh, fact checkers. They didn't have all that stuff before, before the right. pandemic, right? That I can recall. That's true. So you can't say anything without someone else doing it. So who fact checks the fact checkers? And like, I just don't like all the restrictions because I feel like it, as soon as you hide things, it becomes like a scary yeah. society where you can't like, why can't we have, anything. you can't trust anything you're seeing because someone's agenda is removing the things that they deem inappropriate. So someone is determining what what they think. Yeah, you can't tell me what to think, can't. Like, oh, I want to check it out and see if I dig it for myself. If it's not good, I won't pay attention. If it's we, good, um, I'll fucking check it out. Exactly. We are well-raised and we exactly. think about things. 
and we'll talk it through with people that we love and trust and to be like, Hey, I saw this. What do you, and we can toss the idea around pause and maybe <laughs> we'll come to some interesting conclusions. Maybe you'll agree and, or maybe you'll be like, no, that's ridiculous. But I think we should be able to have those conversations. Conversation has been essentially stamped out for the last few years over many different topics and people know where I'm getting at here, but yeah, I think it's terrifying how much everyone has been uh, stopped to talk about anything. And some things are so taboo, you can't even bring it up or it's like this big thing. And part of that is kind of what Kanye has been doing. If he wants to say these things, I don't think it should be because it's not hateful. If it's, if it's hateful, then I'm, I feel like maybe we could have a conversation. It gets a point to, if it gets to a point like that, you're going to be like, Hey, but how do you draw the line though? That's like, true. And who do you, <clears throat> I guess, what, how do you know this? Depends on how aggressive the, the direction is and at who. Yeah. And the... it's almost like, well, why is this one okay, but this one's not okay? Then it becomes arbitrary a bit. So that's probably why they cut a lot of it. It's like bringing your dog to a restaurant. Like you could bring Barrington in and he's cute and doesn't bother anyone and sits on our lap or sits hey, right quiet, next to us. Chilling. Or you bring those ones that are ponies with slobbering everywhere and bumping into your chair and ruining your experience. So they're like, well, if I let the little dog in, I have to let the big dog in. So let's put no dogs in. And I think that's the same concept because I've been learning yeah. about that recently, obviously. Um, yeah. And I'm thinking it's, it's the same concept to this. So it's, it's, it's a tough conversation, but it's a conversation that needs to be had. Like, how do we do it? And I just think too many ideas have been cut away and it d- doesn't yeah, help. You can't get past it. You can't get past it unless you have that conversation. Then you get stuck in this fucking censorship. And then it's become circle. sides. Everyone has to pick a side. I don't want to pick a side because the truth is never on either side. The truth in life is in the middle middle is moderation too much alcohol will fuck you up no alcohol is boring so moderate that shit same with anything too much exercise you become nuts none you become a fat cunt like every single thing too much sugar will do bad you know everything you can think of in life is Has better be balanced. in moderation and balance balance is what you want in music balance is what you want in a great wine or beer like everything comes down to balance as the age i'm at that's what i've learned the truth is in the middle left is crazy right is crazy the truth is in the middle but the left have good points the right have good points the problem is now you weren't able to say anything you still really can't maybe twitter will see and i I don't like that i don't like living in that world where um, we've been scared to talk about so many things on this podcast to be fair true because very true and i'm talking discuss it (laughs) as we were figuring out how we felt about things but i'm petrified Mm -hmm. to do that and we're very small. We're not like anyone major on, at this point saying anything crazy. And we're still opting not to. We don't tweet about it. We don't Facebook, Instagram about anything controversial. Because it's just going to, I don't know, it's going to people come and start arguing with you. I don't want to argue with Deal people. Deal with keyboard warriors? Fucking YouTube. Yeah. Man. Jesus Christ. Oh, they're the worst. But like why can't we just talk about it? Cause nothing's a discussion. That's what makes me scared to say anything about anything we think because no one wants to talk. Everyone wants to cancel. So that's why Kanye, like maybe he is saying stupid shit, but no one wants to, I guess he's being able to talk about it a reasonable amount, but then they took drink champs down. They're censoring him. They're blocking him on different stuff. Like they're like, if you don't like it, eventually they don't have him on. So don't have him on. Fuck. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't know. Just don't have him on. If he keeps saying dumb shit, eventually no one will have him on. Then he'll disappear. Stop giving light to it. Same as 6 9 and stuff. Like, everyone who's being oh, exactly. canceled is like... I don't know, man. I I'm starting, I feel like a lot more people uh, feel that way than would admit to it because I talk to people all the time and True. I'm very surprised at how many people we know feel that way uh, as far as like right. about just freedom of speech and just how ridiculous everything's getting. So it's a crazy time to be alive, better or worse. <laughs> Maybe I didn't well say said, too much man. now. Really, that really explains it. Because, like, it's a fucking, it's a slippery topic. And, yeah, you explained that really well. well I, I hope I didn't go, I didn't think I went too far with anything. I thought it would be very factual oh, no. and logical. Um, of course. And I'm still holding back insanely about how I feel about things. It's just, like, because I'm so annoyed. But I feel like it, it, anything I'm saying now is very reasonable. And anyone who would come and sort of attack for that is being inherently unreasonable. And I'm not interested in anything except having a, chill conversation and this isn't really what we're intending to do here anyway this is just catching y'all oh, we always keep it light and fun but yeah but this is like an important topic and it's like you know yeah like even even it's uh the whole freedom of speech shit affects kind of some other industries like fucking stand-up comedy comics yeah, exactly. are getting fucking 
cunts are coming up on stage and to fight, fighting cunts now because they're saying shit. It's a fucking joke, cunt. Don't go to yeah. a comedy show if you want to. If you feel if you such can't a way, take but jokes. Like, exactly. If you can't take a joke, bro, it's literally what you went there for. Like in some some you know, you've got different ratings of comedians. Like you literally have R and X rated fucking comedy comedians that talk about that really taboo shit. And like, you know, I, I guess some snowflakes are going to the X rated shows and getting upset and wanting to punch the fucking comic out. That shit's wild. I remember Joe Rogan talked about that a while ago too yeah. um, on his shit. And it's just kind of like, wow. I, yeah, that makes sense. Like why, why are cunts getting pissed at comics? They're supposed to go there for a giggle. And some of them are really larry and racy, kind of like they do that crazy, they push the line and the boundaries of uh, of what's kind of okay. Like I even watched uh, fucking Neil Brennan's Three Mics last night. I watched a bit of it. I I, I can't really um, can't really get into that guy personally. It's for, for, for a stand-up guy, he's not as animated as like, I think feel he needs to be whatever the delivery was kind of weird, but um, yeah, he says some wild shit. He's touching on like pedo shit and fucking like it's it's wild. Like I, Who, I just don't find that shit. Where fun. is it? But Neil Brennan, Netflix. Netflix, cool. Gotcha. That's, that's the guy that did uh, Chappelle show and stuff, right? I know the name, man. I, like I should. He wrote. Look. He wrote. I'm pretty sure he wrote for Chappelle show. He's a uh, white guy, glasses, big ears. No. I mean, he is kind of funny, but like. I don't know. Sometimes I can never, I, just, I can just imagine oh, yeah. if he was at a smaller venue saying the things that he said in the first like 10 minutes, he someone will come up and punch him in the face, I reckon. So like, so he's really that like sucks that line pushing them. Sucks that, uh, co- uh, you know, comedians are getting or have been uh, targeted with that kind of stuff. Cause like, I don't know. It's supposed to be a joke. He's Chappelle's co writer. So, co writer. Yeah, that's write. what it's saying here. So you're right. Um, yeah, you're so right. Interesting. Okay, so did you see um, fucking Andrew Schultz's uh, Infamous? Special? Oh my goodness, that was in, uh, I the Infamous. It when... I, did, I haven't actually seen that, but I follow him and watch his stuff. He said some fucking. He's obviously responded to. Why you see his response to Kanye's stuff? Um. Yeah. Listen to that whole episode on Flagrant. Um. He missed the point on some of it too, and I felt like yeah. he was just jumping on the "let's be angry." He's okay, anti-Semitic. Mate. I'm like, break down the comments and make sure he's more anti-black than anti-Semitic. You could probably argue, like, it's not. Mm. But if you look at the whatever, that's where it gets complicated. Like, I just feel like yeah, they yeah. were all jumping on, and no one was. There wasn't much of a. I feel like Schultz sometimes misses the mark. Sometimes he's so on point, but sometimes yeah, he just true leans too far into what's what most people are saying rather than analyzing it or whatever the fuck and being like okay is this statement anti-semitic well yes i can argue this no because i don't know just look at them one by one and then determine i don't think anyone's done that i feel like you say the word the j word and then everyone's losing their shit so i haven't seen that many people non-biasly like analyze it completely i feel like um, everyone kind of has a bias these days yeah to a degree so it's hard to find them comedians are typically the most can look at it from both sides because all they care about is what's funny so they can always look at i find a little bit more i listen i know we both listen to a lot of comedy um in a comedy podcast (coughs) excuse me or comedians on podcasts and they Mm. often have some fucking gems they're my favorite people to listen to they're they're amazing and i agree with everything you've said before mate your faces so um no that's really cool sorry to get that into super deep that guys like no said we try and keep it light. that's pretty like i don't care sometimes we get real fuck it um and we can get real as well now the only other thing really you had kendrick live in paris on prime oh okay yeah amazon prime uh it was a concert that there was on the 22nd of october i didn't watch it until a few days later but yeah it's fucking good um just a live concert fully filmed <laughs> Cool. He is rapping the entire time. Um, he has no backups. Um, he's got, you know, the fills and stuff in his show mix. And, uh, yeah, he's fucking exceptional. He's such a great artist, man. He's fucking wild. They have, they have great choreography. It's, it's kind of abstract and minimal, but it was really cool. Uh, the set is, like, basically like a huge kind of cross. And then there's, like, a stage at the, at the, the back and stuff. The thing elevates and whatever whatever but yeah it's a really good watch if you got amazon prime i'm sure there'll be some other way to check it out uh, eventually but yeah it's a fucking good concert to watch i really enjoyed it love it okay that's amazing yeah um, it's good go kenny 
I'm uh, I'm keen for for that. That's really cool. I didn't even know what you were talking about when you said you'll watch it. So I have Prime. I'm ready. Yeah. Um, yeah, I watched it again today because it was just good background music while I was uh, getting lunch ready. Okay. Good times. No, just put it on during the day and just vibe out. It's a great one. Just jack it on, man. <clears throat> and then you said here as well, Locks are working with Diddy to get their publishing back. Yeah, I saw that. It's like, what the fuck? Didn't they own this shit? Because like, I thought they were all boys in that. But like, that's great that they're doing that. But I didn't know that Diddy still owned all of their publishing. Well, he was the label. So that's usually how it goes. Like, Yeah. Fair that, enough. I, did you see Irv Gotti on Drink Champs? Because he was explaining why he's not giving Ashanti back her masters to publish. Oh, fuck. No. Um, we're not really publishing. It's like the masters, really. Because whoever wrote it, wrote it. It's just that the masters, because he paid for it, his label. So Murder Inc. owns it. And he said, that's what the label puts money out for. That's what we work for. If we don't have these masters, then what do we have? Like, that's what the label works for. I was like, fuck, that's fair. So it's like, like if you, yeah, it's a whole more nuanced conversation. So I don't know exactly the details with the Lux and Diddy, but. um, Yeah, this is just kind of an eye opener to me. I thought they already had their shit sorted out because, like, they were all the Mariah joints. It's a lot of money right there. Puff was a notoriously um, cunty. Cheeky fucking, yeah. He fucked everybody always. always Every single fucked. artist, yeah. That's why he got to where he would. Unfortunately <clears> for him, like, you know, he got to the top by fucking people over, which is a shame. Like, and all of them, like, the artists Shitty way to go, trusted mate. him. So, bit of a shame. So, that is uh, interesting. The other thing, when we reminded me, I got um, I got a tushy, one of the bidets for oh, our bathroom. Baby. Um, I tried to install it. I did went to step one. I was like, Getting a plumber, so I got a plumber to come through. Ah, do it properly. <laughs> sick. I'm what not fucking it one? up. Turn the cold oh, water off. Let's <laughs> turn the water off, and I was like, "That tap doesn't look like my tap, and if I put it the wrong way, am I going to flood the bathroom?" I got. I'm like, "Nope, it's water." I'm not doing it. Man. It's not like putting an IKEA desk together, right? Like, no, there's definitely a different. The yeah, whole yeah, thing. And the I watched shit, him do one. it. No, oh, fuck that. He needed to fix something. Our other toilet was fucking up with the chain, so he fixed all that anyway. So it was worth the call. But watching him do it, absolutely, absolutely no way. And I would have 100% flooded the bathroom. So, like, you had to do things. We had to, like, take a cup and take all of the water out of the top of the system of the toilet. Because when you were, you had to actually unplug the cable. All the bottom and then you pl- and that all the water would have just poured out. So you had to unplug it with, uh, I mean, un- empty it. Yeah, unplug it cup. put this new one in plug that back and then plug because i got the hot water one so it actually had to go under the sink and tap into the hey, hot water hey i take care of my shit box so let's go so that's been fun to use it's really weird when i first did it i was like whoa it's like whoa it's pretty like sharp and like it's like getting fucking like a, li- a lizard tongue licking your fucking shit. yeah it's a little yeah, that's strange crazy, eh? and you gotta let it like get warm so you gotta like turn the the, the thing like just a quarter of the way because it dribbles oh first oh before it God. sprays. Oh <laughs> so like you got to let it go for like 30 seconds so it gets warm. And then you're like, Woof, oh, 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 yeah. Dude. And you got to move. That's this weird. You should just Good do times. the cold plunge every day to wake you up, mate. That, that's a, that's like washing your face with just the other way, other side, yeah, the other so. end. Yeah, you're probably just sitting on down, just going like that. Like, Woo! And just moving around. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's pretty funny. Um, so that's you have good. the cleanest asshole on the block, do you, mate? Cleanest shitbox on the block. You know the fuck that's vibes. Right. I fucking um, do. The last thing I had here, um, which I'll do very quickly, was Joe. B- I don't know why it keeps coming up. I don't know who started it, but you remember the Joe Biden, Rory Mulby from, yeah, yeah, whatever last year, the year before. Um, it, it's all coming back again. So like, Joe said something. He was like, I don't know. I, I think it started. I imagine it started with him, um, and then Mal responded. <laughs> it was mostly oh, Mal. And it was basically they're calling him a thief. They're like saying that he stole money from them and stuff. And and Miles like every time you buy that, that's me. That's my money. Like you know, because then like he should have paid him for that, uh, or whatever their full argument is. So then I saw a clip yesterday. So the, you know the two dudes who replaced him, Ice and Ish, uh, they yeah. were they were talking to Joe because it was fascinating because the I I feel like all of a sudden I understand exactly what happened. The whole thing makes so much sense now. Because hearing Joe talk, he kept like basically the way that they kept asking questions and then he, he'd kind of like divert and go on a tangent. And then they go, no, 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 answer the question. Yes or no. Did this happen? Or did you give a, did you tell them this or whatever? And they they got to the bottom of it. So essentially it's like there's, I, there's like the Joe Button podcast. And they said that 
he was the owner of the podcast because it's got his name on it. And after expenses, so everyone who works on the show is an expense. Parks with the mixing, mastering, or whatever. Um, all the different dudes, the social media guy, the camera operator, the video editor, all, all of those people are all on salary or they're getting paid to do the work. Um, then after expenses, they had a revenue share. So it was 70% Joe, 15% Mile, 15% Rory, which is what how they got their money. So they were profit share. So if you're a profit share, you've like this podcast, like TMF is owned by us. So when this podcast makes money, Currently, I'm putting up the money for that, and we talked about it. We're like, all right, any money that comes in recoups me for the investment I spent on hosting. Then we just split the money 50-50 down the track, right? And we just do yep. it from there because we host it. I deal with all the, um, the the social media and the uploading. You deal with all the mixing. It's pretty fair. Um, so it's just easy to split it because we're family, and it's not that serious. So we have an understanding of how that works, right? It's profit share. It's not like... You know, he's on a salary or whatever. So when they lost their um, Spotify deal or they chose to end it, there was no money. The money stopped, right? So they've got no sponsors because they didn't have sponsors intentionally because they had a Spotify deal. And the Spotify deal was at cash money like Rogan. Cash money. Um, even though Rogan does have sponsors. So I think he's allowed to take and maybe Spotify take the money or something. Like maybe they make him do it. Don't know what the arrangement is. Either way, Joe didn't want to do ads. That's how you make money mostly from, from podcasts is ads. So they took the money up front from Spotify. When that finishes, there's no income. They don't because they didn't have advertisers. So then it's gonna they go, well, the money has to come from somewhere to keep shit going. We either stop or we keep going whilst we figure out the next situation to bring in the money, which ended up being the Patreon deal. Where Joe was given a seat on the board and they had a Patreon, and that's where they generated their uh revenue from. Still as profit share. So he said, in the meantime. I'm going to take my money to pay all the expenses and keep the lights on, pay for the studio space, pay parks, pay the video editor, all that shit, and take that money from his other work. I guess just, you know, he's got other TV shows, other shit that he does, and then cover it until that comes back in to then recoup that company back or recoup him personally back and then yeah. go back into it. And that included paying Rory and Marl. So what I think what happened is they didn't really think about like, where's the money coming from to keep shit going. And they wanted to order him. Yes. And they wanted to order and see the books, but they don't own the company. They just have profit share. So they're entitled to see the accounting. And that's what they were pissed about. Because I think instead of downloading a um, a report from QuickBooks, which we can do because we have that shit for our business. They just put it in an Excel spreadsheet. Anyone can type anything in Excel, so it doesn't make sense. But they're asking about all the different, you know, what, what expenses are being covered, which they probably should. It's a weird model. Instead of being an employee, you're a profit share, but you don't really have the rights of an owner. So, like, right. if you're not a co-owner of it, like, you can't really ask for too, too much because I'm like, it's not your fucking company. You're getting paid. Shut up. Like, whatever. So I think that's where it came from. I think they, that that situation wasn't explained properly. Um, and that caused all of this. So it really came down to, I think, just Joe not telling them exactly what it is because there were so many assumptions when they were asking the questions. They were like totally assuming – he Joe was assuming that they just knew what was up without having right. a convo. So it was just really funny to yeah, see that whole shit. Bro, it's the most important thing it's, in the world. The fucking key is fuck, dude. Like that could have been solved with like a 10-minute convo or less. Basically. And if they had problems with that, then whatever. But the thing is, they got involved in something that existed. Me and you started our own shit for everything we've ever done. We've never joined someone else's like party. We had TMF. You got Ill Note. I got High Season. I got BOS. You're a part of BOS too because you were there from the beginning. So those three owners. Yep. Like we yep. know the three owners. Me, it was me. Or I guess if I own it, Tiff owns it too. But like TMF, that's you know yep. our shit. We are full owners of it. They're all registered businesses. Like they're legit operations and we all know what the fuck we're doing right there's no like we came in on someone else's so like you have to ask you know or you don't really know what the situation is like i would never do stand or whatever like you feel like you can't really ask you know specifics yeah because you never really feel like it's yours and you know joe Mm -hmm. Biden's a personality it's named after him everyone knows he's the reason people are watching you know, the other guys are just kind of filling chairs and doing a good job at it, but they're not as important, so they know they don't hold the weight. 
because Joe can be like suck my dick. I'm the I'm the reason this is even working. So what I say goes and blah blah blah. Whereas if it was a real company and we had actual percentages and voting shares and all that stuff, like you don't have to different. really worry about that. Like anything that we ever do is a discussion on the podcast and everything. And we talk about it. Like, hey, you want to do this? Basically, we always make if someone has a cool idea, we just do it. It's like, yeah, you want to try it? Yeah, fuck, let's try it. Who knows? Who cares? Yeah. Like we do the pod all the time. We do this shit. Just you know, so I want to do a pod. Yeah, let's do it. Like, we're just giving it a crack, right? So it just made me grateful for our situation and for being full, fully in control. Oh, uh, and, yeah. And just yeah. funny to see the... Not funny, because it's sad. Because now there are all these people now lose, lost friends. Money was lost, drama. Like, it's just a sad situation that could have been avoided with, like you said, a 10, 20-minute combo or something. Like that. Yeah. So I thought that was interesting. I just wanted to bring that up, because... Uh, <laughs> That's and I talk- That's a... a- Definitely makes a lot of sense now that we've got all the pieces together because, like, yeah, you're right. It was very vague before, kind of like, what the fuck is actually happening behind the scenes? I don't think they all knew. I don't think they knew. Joseph. Fucking wall. Fucking Joey Joseph. And with that, we're at an hour 20, so I feel like we've uh, caught back up. Let everyone know what's going on. Yeah, we're definitely bored cunts today, mate, for sure. Hey, man, this is something a bit different. We still talk about (laughs) the culture and shit, so, you know, I feel like this is the direction we're going. Good one. I like this. This was fun. This This is a mature pod. I like this one. Yeah, I like healthy, his... healthy, wealthy, and wise at the start, and then we went into uh, sick cunt haven at the end. Right, true, I love that. Bad habits. I love it when uh, yeah, we have good habits and bad habits. You know, maybe we always try to have a good, yeah, good man. habit segment. We talk about something like positive to help people. Hey. And shit. hey, we're we're all hey, grown. We actually we're... have a uh, a really funny thing. We had a I have a note in my my uh, thing here. Okay. And it was like, be less of a dumb cunt every day by seeing notion. <laughs> What's that about? I swear we talked about this cunt. So is it a book? This is what it says. On July the 3rd this year, it's it's a shared note with me and you. It, the title is Be Less of a Dumb Cunt Every Day by Seeing Notion. And we have topics. And this is, this is something I think we we're possibly going to talk about as a segment. So I guess, can we just do it? <clears throat> so I see it here now. Are we trying to say that this yeah. is a... Um... We just save it for like future episode because like we have, they're all dot points. So we're gonna I think like this is for a book. On each episode. I think we said we're going to do it in a book. Oh, we're going to make a book together. Sick. Now it's on the wax too. And it's like, oh, we've said it. And this is all positive stuff, like you know, creativity, diet, um, meditation, shit like that. Things to make you be less of a dumb guy just really means be more of a sick cunt. Be more of a sick <laughs> Be less of a dumb cunt and more of a sick that's cunt. That's the second book. That's the, that's the second book. We can do two books. Ooh. Less of a dumb cunt and the second one is more of a sick cunt. It's two different angles of attack trust me yeah. we can explain it in both books i'm writing it down here be more of we'll co-write the whole thing every day yeah i'm down bro i wonder if we can get yeah, a buy and i feel like it would actually sell because um we are hilarious and plus we both can write well and you know it'll be entertaining for everybody well there's all a levels of reading i feel like we could do and it, and it could be like 100 pages I'll, I'll yeah things. yeah oh dude okay we're too long and you can just get it done on amazon you can just do like the Amazon. They do like a um, classic way, ebooks. You know what I'm talking? No, bro. You can get them printed too, but print on demand oh, for books. The... Get fucked. You just got to get someone to got to get a designer to design it all, and you just upload the pages. Get, get. Tiff is our designer. She is amazing. We'll uh, we'll we'll pay Tiff to do something. I'll fun. see if she can. Um, I just feel like it's we'll get uh, some dinner. definitely hilarious. So I thought it was new Yeezys That's amazing. or something. I added that uh, notification. Um, oh. It no, wasn't. It's okay. So oh, okay, we'll talk about it. But that's very funny. But uh, back in action. Very good. Happy you are healthy and getting. You know, you basically back yeah, to man. back to action, back to normal. We'll be. Thanks, bro. Uh, I don't see foresee any other issues that will really restrict us too much. Um, yeah. Leading up, so um, everything is blessed. Nosh, where can they find you online? Mate, get your fucking teleponos out. Uh, at, at Notion Baby on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. At Illnote Studios on Instagram and Facebook. Um, at Notion Baby on TikTok. And Notion MTB on Instagram. See? Boom. Love it. Get me uh, at CWFOR on Instagram and Twitter. Elon's Twitter. And at CTMF Ooh. on fucking TikTok and Facebook. And everyone, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for being patient with us. It's been thank a... You. uh a rocky H2 of 2022. Um, inconsistent, which is not what we like. 
Um, we're going to really do our best. I have nothing crazy coming up that I can recall that would fuck up a consistent pod now. So as long as we yep. keep our health and, uh, you know, Dan, oh yeah, I guess Dan will be back at some point. Um, About he, bloody time. Yeah. Dan's, truth, mate. Dan's been off, but look, you know, he, he can come hey, back he's, whenever he's, he's ready. He's elevanting, elevanting around uh, he's, Montreal. He's living nice life. Time. Yeah, he's living the his kids. life. So we, he might jump back on in the next few weeks. We'll see what's up. We'll keep you all posted. Forward to that. Um, but uh, if you enjoyed the episode, smash thumbs up. Hit subscribe below. Hit the notification bell. No short. Ding. So you know when the new new drops. Follow us everywhere at The Movement Fam. We drop every Monday at 8 p.m. for the most part, unless we record on Mondays. This week, it's going to be uh, Halloween. So we wanted to do it tonight because I'm uh, in a house for the first time in... Uh, a long time so i want to see what happens if the kids with the little shim be like it was good like i don't know i was asking people like how do you determine what you give cunts make sure you go, swear at them be like sup little oi, you know sup little cunt them. yeah oh you can't you want some chalky <laughs> oh all right fucking say thanks cunt thanks cunt yeah. all right what do you say <laughs> thanks, thanks cunt, cunt. <laughs> and then the dad looks at you and goes Nice one, mate. Like, he's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> fucking you teaching yeah, him, mate. Yeah. You fucking yeah, you. You can't, mate. Oh, yeah, sure, man. VB shoes, mate. Anywhere. You fucking yeah, this guy. I can't. Don't worry. So what else do I say? Um, anyway, that's it. Love you guys. We'll see you in the next Love episode. Guys. Get a dog up here. Dogs. Dogs. Barrington. Two dogs. Ooh. Where is he? Ah, oh, taking the shit. Wolfy, wolf, dog. Barrington, wolf, wolf. taking the shit. You fucking, yeah. yeah. I love this girl taking hold my shit. Splits. Oh, that's, that's pretty. Thing. Yeah, hold my splits. Oh. oh. See you cunts next week, mate. Peace in your fucking face, eh? Boom. Catch boom. you cunts.